unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before. And they eat bread with him and how they celebrate with him and he is restored. And they bemoan him and comfort him over all the evil that the Lord has brought on, upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. But the dial will say some change. <laughs> my, my eldest daughter will say some change. Hallelujah. I don't know where they get that time enough. <laughs> and everyone. So you have to give him some change. <laughs> and everyone. And everyone will go. So Yahweh blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Hallelujah, somebody. And that is what he's going to do with us, with us, his people. Solomon, all his glory, was not a real like us, you know. What we have in the old covenant was a pattern to what Yahweh is going to do to us. And I'm talking about not when we get to heaven. In this life, in this life, he is coming for a glorious trip. You know what is a glorious trip? Think of the temple being glorious. It lacked nothing. Hallelujah. Do you know they spent more than fifty-three billion or trillion dollars to build the temple? Oh. Yahweh is going to invest even more in us as we, as He prepare His bride. Right here, we're going to be prepared. So we don't mind what the enemy throw our way. And again, they say about money, but money is a defense. We use it to establish Yahweh's government. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. We need it to take the gospel. We need it to fix the church and build the church building. You all know that. This is true. Just speak the experience that. Don't let nobody fool you. My sister minister Lord, sister Barry Lloyd, will always say, you need what? Two books. Two books. And it's the truth. I love what she said. Because the ministry cannot go on without it. So we see here that Yahweh restored Job back double. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning was filled. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. Yahweh blessed him. Because let me tell you, when Yahweh begins to do away for you, don't lay it on to your own understanding, yeah? Just acknowledge him whatever you find yourself in. Lift your hand and say, Minister Lloyd said, put it pretty well. You take care of that. Use my daddy. You take it. Lift your hand and give him thanks. No matter what you're going through. But you gotta know this. Because if you don't know this, what Satan will do? Call you and make you feel that like you're the only one going through what you're going through. He will isolate you and take you a different. And the reason why you're going through this, because you got some fault different from everybody. So you, you start questioning yourself. You start wondering, what's wrong with me? Somebody look at you too hard. What you looking at? Because now you don't get your mind. Somebody say something, oh yeah? Ah, yeah. Don't let it come along the line to confirm what you're thinking. That's why you see this here, yeah? Look at me. You see this here, yeah? It's dangerous. The five senses is in this head. Oh, yeah. The five. The mind. The brain, the ass, number two, you hear, the eyes, you see, number three, the nose, you smell, number four, and the mouth, you speak, five. These are where the five senses are. This is what control your body. And we got to be careful what we think, what we hear, what we see, what we smell, even. what we speak. That determines, because that is what Satan is after. It is what you hear, yeah, your members in your body. You gotta protect them. Yes. What you see, you need. What you smell. What you, what you mean smell? You ever smell a beautiful lady pass by with perfume? A beautiful perfume woman. Mm -hmm. Brian, you know what I'm talking about? These men, uh, they're the holy men. They ain't remember that no more. Yes, you know what I'm talking about? Of course we do. <laughs> I know you know what I'm talking about. You smell and you... Your mind and your desire... Tantalize the senses. Huh? Brother D, you understand or are you sleeping over there? Alright? Right here! The eye! The ass! What you hear? Come on, son. 
somebody. Be careful what you hear with these ears. Why? We gotta be careful what we think with our mind. Hmm? Those man think it so he is. What we think? Whatever things are pure, honest, lovely, good. True. Nothing bad. We have to be thinking about because they're going to affect our psyche and what we think we become. That's why we have to be careful of even how we think. What we see mm. with the eye. Remember Eve in the garden? Mm? It's good for the eyes. Good for sight. He, she saw it and she began to what? Desire it. Especially after Satan twists the word and accuse the word. What do you say? What do you say? That, that stuff started making sense to her. She looked at it and she began to desire it. Satan did the same thing with the shooting you know. Take him on a high morning and show him the kingdom of this world. Show him to see all of this with his glory I give it to you. I mean, no Satan rule the kingdom of this world right now. Yes. And he, he said that he give it to who he wants. I give this to you. I give it to who I want to give it to. Why? He stole it from Adam. But how many know the time has come when Babylon will be no law, no more? You see what I'm saying? So we now have to be careful with what we say, what we think, because death and life is in the power of the tongue, you know. Now, I, all, I, I just learned this recently. I get death and power in the tongue for so long. But I will look at speak life. Don't just speak life. But how many know we're supposed to speak that too? For the things that we want to die. Not all our friends. But over the things in our life, the demonic forces that Satan sent us every day, we send the fire of the Holy Ghost and speak death to everything that is supposed to be living in your life. But we got a tendency to say, oh, we can speak life. Speak life. Yes, speak life. But sometimes you got to speak death to the things that need to die. And get empowered. That's why he give you both. But we just get spiritual about it. We are fighting a war. We are in a war. Like some things you got to kill. You don't go to war and you ain't got no weapon. Some things you have to die. So you're not controlling the spiritual. Come on, somebody. But we, what we do, we just be with the good side. See, that's how Satan wants us to be. But if we don't win this battle, we're going to start speaking death to some things. David, he never used to play. There's a part of David. There is a use of uncircumcised Philistine to complain around me. Why kill you? Get you in front of me. I said, boy, I like you. Use a man after my eye. I could use you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Y'all be like people like that. Some of us will don't be a saint. He's so pious. He can't use us because we're ready. We're never enough. Yes, yes. When Moses saw that Hebrew taking a wife, uh, uh, Hebrew, well, he just him taking advantage of the Hebrew. What do you did? Kill him. To leave my brother home by alone, boy. You crazy? I kill you. I go up in the palace, but I kill you. That was like a use you come here. But you know, Satan had a plan for Moses a long time now. Satan had a Satan had a plan for Moses. He had, and look here, Satan had to. Remember the What do you did? He killed. King Abel, to King. Praise the family. Then you go back, the sons of God, with the daughters of men. Big time involved with that. Sons of God, sons of God, with the daughters of men. Yeah, he was involved in that. Then he comes to Noah. That caused the flood. Satan doing you know. He was involved in my affairs. Then he comes the flood. And then, remember right after the flood, what happened? It was three sons, Japheth, Shem, and Ham. Shem and Ham. Two of those brothers didn't look at the father naked. Nakedness. Or well, one day, that's Ham. Over which came who? Nimrod. Who set up the whole world. The cursing of Ham as a result of what Satan did. It wasn't Yahweh who lead them like that, you know. It was Satan right behind master planning everything. When he saw Jacob comes. He put his off to take Jacob away right. Same thing with Abraham Isaac. There's a war going on there. And then when it comes to Moses, 
Truth go! He said, Pharaoh and I want you to kill all the boys in the land. That's how Moses got there. In the, in the river. Mm-hmm. That's how we get the river. Just to save his life. Like Satan knew something was going to be born. A Satan was going to be born. So it's like he had this sixth sense. He said, kill all the boys. What happened when Yeshua was born? When he went in the Get to a hammer in Kill all the boys. That was Satan doing. But how many know? <laughs> he only could do what Yeshua allowed him to do. Hallelujah. Remember that. He will only get done what you're sure. He is only a tool in the hand of Yahweh. We must see him like that. Because see, Yahweh working what? Good and bad. Let's go quickly to the new covenant. And we're going to see now that we understand that he works in good and evil according to Job. Let's see what we can learn from the Apostle Paul as we read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. With regards to circumstances, what do we do when we are confronted with circumstances that does not look too good for us? How do we handle it? Corinthians 11. Here is Paul giving us a list. This is a man called by Yahweh. One of them same kind of spirited David, Moses, those kind of fellas. Who was a murderer, but Yahweh used him to do what? Write all the books. But he ain't now changed. All again. Yahweh can do it. He can do it to the wildest of sinners. Hallelujah. Paul was one. But listen to what we learned from his experience. Of the Jews, five times received I for his stripes. Except one. That means. 39. Now, just think of a man who full of the Holy Spirit. Just think of a man who went to the third heaven. Just think of a man who see and witness and knows the mystery of Yahweh. Look at what kind of experience and circumstances he is confronted with. When you look at these kind of preachers, you wonder what happened to the preachers today. Because they can't find glory in these things. But listen to Paul's testimony. Listen to Paul's testimony. Of Jews five times received by forty stripes. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once the Holy Spirit was then, when he was being beat. I want you to think with yourself. Right there. While I read this, think with yourself. That's right. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. At night and day I have been in the deep. In journey often. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, unbelievers, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and in perils among Paul's brethren, those in the center of the church. Paul's life was a life of peril. But this is a holy man. His circumstances were surrounded by trials and temptation. When we go in through, we can learn a thing or two from him. Because if we're going to fight this war, we got to fight this war knowing that you will go through. You will be tested and tried because as a matter of fact, that's the only way Yahweh can get glory out of you and I. Has nothing to do with the money. Has nothing to do with what's on your bank account. What it wants in us is character. When you say, I, I come to take a people out of the Gentiles for my name, what do you think he's talking about? Character. Somebody who is going to see five, two thousand dollars and go to the police and turn it in because they know it ain't yes. Character. That's what you're looking for. That's what Job had. That's why he could have said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? A man who is evil. A man who is righteous. Yahweh now wants us to be that kind of person. And so we have to be of that mindset if we're going to win the battle. That because the war won't stop, folks. And I think this time to share this with you because I know the 
goes on. And you know why you have to prepare your mind and yourself likewise? Because where we going, if you're associated with me, you get you, you got ready. Because let me tell you, I gotta tell the people the name of the Son of God in Jesus. I gotta preach them to this nation. I gotta tell them that we have been deceived. That Satan has changed the times and the laws of God. That is easy. Sometimes I roll over my bed, but I have to do it because I've been called to do it. Because Yahweh said, These islands, I will glorify my name. And to glorify the name of God is to glorify the temple of God. Wherever his name is, is his temple. And we are his temple. You cannot separate the name from the temple. They're one and the same. But it's the character that is going to emanate from this temple. And Yahweh will then be proud of his name. Are you ready to take his name? Because he said you will suffer persecution for my name's sake. That's it. That's so there is a war we in. And we ain't got no life and got to fight at night. So our attitude relative to our circumstances is going to be important if you're going to win. You know, you know, you know. Your attitude is always better than your attitude. You gotta be ready to turn your next cheek. You gotta be ready to love your neighbors as yourself. You gotta be ready to love your enemy as yourself. You gotta be ready to do good to those who despise you and use you unless you are prepared to love the way Yahweh say love. The way you're tired of the preachers. The children of God want to see. They're tired of the yelling and they ain't nothing. The word is that matching the action. The time for love to be demonstrated. Or else his glory can never ever be revealed. And we are the temple and he must demonstrate his glory to us. So the war is on. He's coming to prepare people for his name. But he knows that's a war. To bring that about, you know, like stuff, you know, because the minute the name show up in you, Satan goes to work. Because you know what you want to do? Out your light. You don't want your light to shine. See, you can go to heaven. Once you're born of God, you can go to heaven and win. You can make it in, but your wife will be burned up. You will be escaping us through a tree. But your spirit and your soul goes to Yahweh. But your work is ineffective. And he destroys our work. And men won't be able to see it. And glorify the heavenly Father. Come on, somebody. So your light is shining. You're the light. So the minute you take his name, he is at you. Oh yes, yeah. see one day he just gets saved. He just gets out of his pen. He's free. But let's get him back here. You know we can't get him back here, but at least we can kill his character. We can cause him to be an event death. The only person that's coming to my head, in my mind right now, is that fellow who was on TV. What do you name? Swagger. I admired him, Jimmy Swagger, remember? Yeah. And he got caught in an adulterous situation. Wow. Men who mean bad. Yes. But Satan never stopped because if I go he like, I could keep thousands in my coffin. That's how we work. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So now, what we're reading is for. We're reading is to see that believers go through. If we're reading is to see that God's greatest man, this false gospel that they preach, where you are passing, look at me, and the first thing they see is my shoes, and look at my car to see my driving, and when they see that they turn away, they won't fellowship with me. <laughs> Bless Yahweh, praise be to Yah. Because I, 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 I don't look the past. I don't look the past. See, the day righteousness and holiness it's associated with how much money you have or how many people in your church. How many know that devil is a liar? Yeshua said there will be people that will come to say, Father, how many cast of this in your name? And how many done this in your name? And this, I never knew you away from me. You work of iniquity. That ain't no standard for righteousness. And I trust none of you all are doing this house to be. Because sometimes, sometimes I wonder. In this house, sometimes I would ask the church to do things. It hurt me, you know. And let me talk about it. I would say, give y'all praise. And I don't hear one word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I say, give y'all 
I just prayed. We have one word from the whole church. Folks, it's the little things. You know what I mean? You're not hearing your shepherd voice. Look on TV. And watch when the pastor say, Yeah, they say, Yeah. I'm not impressed by the words, you know. Don't mess with me with that stuff. I must pray till a lot of sit me a thing. I see a lot of things, but only because of my long suffering, my barbarian, my patient, faith, which is fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you walk in those things, they will take you weak. When you're ready to forgive 77 times 7, they take you weak. You better get up and slap back. Now that's a real man. But that's not the way of the kingdom. He said, turn the next cheek. Forgive. Love your enemy. When you walk in these kind of things and you don't hold back things, they make you look, they think you weak and you weak, they are straight. Anybody could do the opposite. But everybody could forgive 77 times. Some people only forgive once, some can't forgive none. And it turns into iniquity. And their heart is like open sepulchre. You know, God said, Look, I see you. I even can't hear your prayer. Because what you got in you. You say you forgive the sister. You say you forgive the brother. Hallelujah. But your heart and mind is far ah, from what you say. I see you. I am not impressed. Because the fruit of your forgiveness, I need to see that. Let me can't forgive and forget. You can't. Because God said you could. He said you and see forgetfulness. Does that mean you have it? No. mean that the pain that comes along with it yes. is gone. And that person you can fellowship, you can love them like they never did you no wrong. Even with the pain. Even with the member. Even with the pain. That's right. Yes. You love them genuinely. Yes. And forgiveness means that it is gone. It will take some time. That's right. But love anyhow. Yes. I said love anyhow. Because yes. without that, you'll never carry the name of the yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go back to Paul. Listen, Paul. Verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in lie and fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that I will have, that which coming upon me to you. The care of all the churches, my God. Mm? Who is weak and I'm not weak? Who is offended and I, I burn not? In other words, with indignation. He don't get thrown out. The things don't move him. But he go through it. Hallelujah. Got the church. That ain't all that light responsibility, you know. Minister Lord would always say to me, This thing ain't light. There's some heavy stuff you can't read. Trust me, leadership is not an easy thing. You want to see how hard the work is? Become a pastor. As simple as you think it looks. Become a pastor. That ain't nothing to play with. You don't see plenty grow on my head. That's why I cut it so low. Because <laughs> huh? it reminds me of the things that I go through from time to time. You know, and I'm not complaining. I do it all over again. But all I'm saying, as I close, because obviously my hour is gone, right? My hour gone? Yes. Not yet. Obviously my hour is gone. Thank you. Right? Yeah. Obviously my hour is gone. That's only 50 minutes. <laughs> Don't tell me I can't take much time. The whole thing is, you all get the gist of what I'm saying. <laughs> We need to understand that no matter what the enemy throw up with, our attitude will always be better than our attitude. Don't try to get high. Be loud to pray. Be real. Be genuine. People could feel many are genuine. Especially if you are led by the Spirit of God. They can feel it. They can, they can feel you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Sometimes you laugh in my face and I know the laugh is real. I smile. 
But I said, at least they do their best. They try their best. So Father, thank you for that. Hallelujah. But see, all of you offend people say, Daniel, yes. even the pastor. Yes. I don't stand your uh, fault this before you. That is not what I'm saying. Somebody said, we all have gone astray. None. It's righteous. No, not one. And if you say you want no sin in your the word of God, say, not me. That you are a liar. That's why sometimes I want to say, follow me as I follow the Messiah. And I can say that. But we fall short in so many ways. I don't want you all to look at me. Look at Yahweh. Look at Yahweh. My job is to point you to Him. As I follow Him, you follow Him too. That's how I like to put it. Be this man. Remember Paul? Oh, wretched man that I am. Hallelujah. The things that I want to do, I do not. That's, that's just the sin nature of us. And we all have it. Let us pray for one another. Let us understand, brothers and sisters, that this one you might, might know my power. It's only by the spread. Whatever circumstance you are going through, all of us look to the God of that circumstance. Look to Him. When's coming your help? When's coming my help? Hallelujah. Let's be encouraged today. Hallelujah. Let's stand to your feet. Let's write it down. I want to just say, the prayer meetings, it is dropping off.